Welcome to Developer Ramp Up, a channel dedicated to anybody who wishes to become a software developer or a better software developer. In this tutorial we will talk about random numbers in C Sharp. We will see how we can generate random numbers, how we can create arrays that contain random numbers, and we will also look at some more realistic use cases for random numbers in our programs. But let's get started. In C Sharp we have in the default system namespace, the random class. And you guessed it, we will use this random class in order to create random numbers. Now, in order to do that, we need an instance of this class. So let's go ahead and create a new instance of this class. We will call it RND, and it will be equal to new random, and we'll also use the default constructor, and that's it. Now we have the instance of this class. Let's have now a number variable, which will be of type int, and this will be equal to round.next, and we'll use the default next method, and this will generate a random number at runtime, and we'll assign it to our number variable. Now let's check this out. Let's print this to the console, right line of course and we will use the number and also let's add a console read line in order to keep the console open after the output is displayed and right now if we run this program what we will get is a random number and in fact we got a random number However, a problem with this random number is that it is a very big number and it might be difficult to read it so the next question that would arise is, is there a way that we could define an interval and each time we generate a random number, that number should belong to that interval? But before answering this question, let's go to the random class definition to check exactly what we have at our disposal. And we see that we have the next method, the one that we used, and we have an overload which takes an int value which is the max value in this case. What this will create, it will create a random number between zero and to the max value that we provided. And the next overload takes two arguments which is an int for mean value and another int for max value. In this case we can simply provide a an int that would be the starting point of the interval and a max value that will be the finishing point of the interval. So this means if we choose for example 5 as min value and 10 as a max value, each time we'll run or each time we'll generate a new random number, it will generate a number between 5 and 10. Now one important thing to note is that when we run the next method no matter of the overload. It will return a non-negative random integer. However, it's very important to know that always it will include the mean value and the number that we will generate will be less than the max value. So mathematically, it will be greater than or equal to the mean value or less than the max value. And this applies for each of these next methods. So no matter if we use the default one, which takes no argument, or if we want, if we use the next method with a max value, or if we use the next method with an interval. So each time it will give us a random number that is greater than or equal to the mean value or less than the max value. The next thing that I want to point out is let's say a more general thing about random numbers in C-sharp using the random class. As we can see here, this will generate pseudo-random numbers. What does this mean? This means that the numbers that we get are not 100% random, let's say. This class uses a trigger which is used in order to calculate the random number that it should generate. And for the random class, this trigger is the system CPU clock. So that's why the numbers generated with this random class are not 100% random, but are in a certain way defined by the system clock value at the time when we generate the random number. However, this meets certain statistical requirements for randomness. So there are some statistical requirements 
let's say to define if a certain number or uh, the way a certain number is generated is really random or not. However, to note here is that the random class uh, is basically giving you pseudo random numbers, which are in a certain way defined by the system CPU clock. Now let's get back to our program and let's try to implement this. So we want to provide an interval and let's run this uh, next method using, for example, 5 and 10. This means that it will give us always a random number that is uh, greater than or equal to 5 and less than 10. And if we run our program right now, we will see in fact that it will give us a number between 5 and 10, which is in this case 8. That's great. Now, the next step. How can we generate arrays that will populate with random numbers? That's also fairly easy to do. First thing, of course, we have to define an int array, which will be numbers in this case. And this will be equal to a new int array. What we have to provide is here also the array length, which will be 10 elements. So our array will always have 10 elements. Now what we want to do is uh, to iterate through all the indices of this array and for each index to give a random number as value. And we can achieve this using a for loop. And the for loop works like this, int i equals 0, we start at 0 we define uh, how long we go with the iteration and in this case we go till uh, i or until i is less than the length of numbers and we have length here and of course uh, we have to specify the iterator which is i plus plus this means that each time i will uh, be greater uh, to, to I will be added one and we'll start this again. And what we want to do is for the current index to assign a new random number. Of course, we have numbers, not number. Number was the variable that we used previously and numbers. And here we have R and D dot next. And let's also here provide an interval, let's say from 1 to 50. This means that the greatest value that we could get would be 49. And we have right now the array. So when we run this program, the array will be populated with random numbers. The next thing that we can do is uh, we can take out this console right line since we don't need it anymore. But we, what we need to do is to run a for each loop in this case. And for each var number in numbers, what we want to do is print out to the console the current number. And in this case, we'll use console write because we want all numbers to be on the same line, not on different line. However, what we will add is a space between the numbers so that we know exactly when a number ends and when the other number starts. And right now, now, let's also maybe write down to the console this uh, number that we generated earlier so that we have this as a reference. This will be console write line number and of course semicolon here. And if we run the program right now, what we should get is also an array of numbers, which is random. And we can check that, for example, if we run this program again right now, we'll see that we get totally different numbers, however, that are in the range from 1 to 49 included. Good. That's it. And uh, this is how we can generate arrays. Now, as a last step, let's get to a more realistic scenario regarding random numbers. And let's try to implement a simple dice game. And how uh, would this work? Let's first define an int, which is dice one, and it will be random number dot next. However, as an interval, we specify one to seven. This means that the greatest value that we could get as a random number is six, which is the maximum uh, value on a dice. Now, int dice two equals random dot next. And of course, we'll also have one and seven as the interval.
Now uh, we, we have these numbers, these values. Now we want to decide exactly who wins. If dice 1 is greater than dice 2, then dice 1 wins. If dice 2 is greater than dice 1, then dice 2 wins. And if dice 1 is equal to dice 2, then it is a draw. So let's implement this simple logic using an if statement. So if dice 1 uh, is greater than dice 2, in this case, we'll write the console that dice one wins, of course. This one wins. Okay, great. And the next step is else if, and in this case, dice two is greater than dice one. What happens in this case is console right line. And in this case, dice two wins. Let's write this dice uh, uh, two wins. Okay. And as a last condition, because we can have uh, only three outcomes, either dice one is greater, either dice two is greater, or those are equal. So in this case, we can simply specify here else console.write line. Okay. And in this case, we'll write out draw. Let's also try to spell it correctly. Okay. However, uh, till we run this program, one thing that we still have to add, we have to print to the console the value of dice one and dice two to know exactly if the outcome is correct. So let's have here a console write line and we will use here dice. Uh, let's add it like this dice one plus dice one, of course semicolon and console.write line and in this case we'll have dice 2 and plus dice 2 okay and semicolon and now we should be ready to run this program and when we run it what we'll get is the outcome of our game and strangely enough from the first hit we have dice 1 5 dice 2 5 and it is of course a draw if we run this again, we should get uh, different numbers and a different outcome. In fact, dice one is three, dice two is one, so dice one wins. Let's check this for the third time. And in this case, what we have here, dice one is two, dice two is one, so dice one wins again. Let's check if a fourth time dice two wins, because I want to see this. Yes, it happens. Uh, dice 1 is 2, dice 2 is 6, so dice 2 wins in this case. So we have seen that our program works correctly, our basic dime, uh, dice game works as expected, the greater dice will always win. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial, if you have enjoyed it, then please don't be shy and subscribe to this channel to get more interesting content like that. If you know people that might be interested in this type of topics, then feel free to share this video on your social network and also if you have any feedback for this channel like topics that you would like to hear and so on don't be shy and hit also the comment button and let me know what you think about this channel thank you very much once again for watching this tutorial and until the next time i wish you only the very best